Okay. Question number two. Number two. Comes from Miss Sarah. This one's for me, yours truly. Sarah says, <clears throat> Yes. My three year old suspected American Bulldog mix is reactive now to any people or dogs in the neighborhood walking by as we mm. go for a walk. Mm -hmm. He seems to remember the small dog that has charged him three times off leash from his own yard uh. while we walked by across the street and leashed. We now struggle to walk by any pedestrian or dog or human combo. He lunges and snarls as though being offensive is his best defense. Okay. You want to hit me with a. Timer? Go for it. Because you know how I like to spin a yarn. Spin a yarn. Okay, so first thing I'd want to know is what tools you're using, right? If you're using flat buckle, martingale, harness, halty, anything like that, you could find yourself in a whole world of hurt where you're not able to actually influence your dog. So that's a really important one. And I know I can't get that information from you right now. That said, we would highly recommend that you go to at least prong collar, but Whenever we get reactive dogs, we always go to prong collar and e collar for walks. So that would be like if you called me up on a phone console and you were like, hey, here's what I've got you know, going on with my reactive dog and he's starting to kind of like generalize to people and stuff, mm -hmm. I would say, I want you to get prong collar on your dog and I want you to get an e-collar on your dog and I want you to watch uh, you know, my e-collar um, uh, e heel videos mm -hmm. and go through those and get your dog into a calm, chilled out, relaxed state of mind on the walk. And once that's rocking and rolling, then you can correct your dog for looking, for escalation for reacting any of that stuff which could be like just a couple days into into the actual program yeah. but there's a whole thing here like the wrong tools and you're kind of toast so you could go out with a great intent and a great strategy and t being being like all resolute as get out mm -hmm. as as get out as all get out as all get out <laughs> and it won't matter if the tools aren't right. Mm -hmm. So the tools are so important for reactivity stuff. So e collar and prong are highly recommended. Um, then the other part of this was that I'd want to make sure that everything else you're doing with all the foundation stuff is also sending the right message to your dog. Sit down, place thresholds, all those things need to look good in the house if they're not if you're allowing your dog too much freedom too much access into your personal space too much affection and not enough structure and rules in the house and obedience commands that he's got to follow you're sending a mixed message and you're telling that dog you can kind of do what you want to do and if your dog says I can kind of do what I want to do in the house he's definitely going to say I can do what I want to do outside on the walk and if he's insecure because he's been attacked or been charged by a bunch of little nasties yeah. then the less structure, leadership, rules, guidance, and accountability you show in the house, the, the less safe he's going to feel on the walk in your presence. Mm -hmm. So you can really leverage the interior work to create fantastic state of mind stuff out on the walk, right? So the combination of the right tools, the right training approach, structure the rules, interior, out, uh, Outerior, <laughs> interior, exterior, make sure that all that stuff comes together. If you're really committed, this is a lot of work. This isn't like, oh, we just put a collar on him and we're, we're you know, we're aces. Yeah. You're talking about like, this dog is starting to generalize. It's an uh, American Bulldog, it's a big dog. And you're talking about him starting to generalize with reactivity and lunging at human beings. Yeah. It's not okay, that's a very dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. So if I was you, I'd go for the full enchilada. You can watch our free videos, link it up here, here, and, and just jump into it and like have some fun with it, but like get your dog into a great space where your dog knows how to heal in a relaxed state. Yeah. I'm telling you, you get a dog to e-collar heal in a relaxed place without all that arousal and silliness and crazy stuff going on, and you will see dramatically different results. Yeah. All the, the dogs that we get day after day are your dogs over and over and over again. And all we do are these simple, basic, approaches with these tools and these strategies and these dogs end up walking really nicely the lunging dissipates the lunging goes away yeah. the growling the barking all that stuff all the hist all the histrionic stuff yeah. go away yeah. so um, and then <laughs> once you do get your dog into a great space with all that if you're like committed to this if you're really ready to go take it on then it comes down to those really simple kind of factors with reactivity stuff which most owners struggle with and that is going too low too slow yes. And that means like once your dog's e-collar condition and knows how to e-collar heal, then when you see it, when you see a dog or your dog sees a dog, the moment that your dog starts to escalate, I don't mean like always oh, starting to like really yeah. lift off. I mean the moment he goes from like this, 
like that, bang. And American Bulldogs are easy, they wrinkle up. <laughs> yeah. So at that moment, you correct nice and firm and yeah. you correct quick. You don't wait and see, don't do what every other owner does that's struggling does. They wait and see, is he gonna do it this time? Is he gonna do it? Right. Maybe we'll just get by. Don't do that. Correct. The first moment of your dog getting uncomfortable, think about it this way, rather than like punishing him, every, the, the first moment your dog gets uncomfortable, correct him so he can relax and become comfortable again. And you can recondition him to be comfortable on walks around dogs and comfortable around people. Yep. So that is my answer. And I hope that that helps you, yes. but it's a lot of work. So you have to be ready to dive in and do that work. Definitely. And I'll drink to that. Definitely. You have 50 seconds. Can I add something? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I was on the phone today with a guy who has a similar situation. The dog has was great with dogs and then got attacked by a couple dogs. And even though yep. he was still like good with dogs, he started to slowly not trust dogs yep. and now is attacking them. So the thing he was asking me, he was a really sweet guy, but he was like, you know, what does affection have to do with this? You know, he's like, we've spoiled what love good. got to do? And, and I, I was like, you know, we don't give absolutes, but what I can say in our experience is that for a nervous dog, nervous about whatever, dogs yeah. or whatever they're, they're stressed about, affection and spoiling is going to be the reason or the undoing of a nervous dog. It's just going to make them more nervous. So what we've seen over and over and over. Can you explain why? Really quick? Quickly is just that, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of reasons, but the reality is the dog doesn't feel like, it feels like there's a soft presence mm. that's taking care of him or supposed to be leading him. So he's actually not being led. So it's like, how can, you know, I use the example of like, why can I rely on you to keep me safe from this dog when you and I just had a cuddle session 20 minutes ago on the couch? You know, yeah. you're my cuddle buddy. You don't take care of me. So I was talking to the guy just about that and it was, it was interesting because it's not like the dog's not like going after him. It's not like being bratty. It's just nervous about other dogs. And we were just talking about how that softness can create a dog that feels way more on its own and alone when out in the world or, or around anything it's nervous about. So yeah. That's something you definitely want to check in with. You you mentioned it earlier. But yeah, I just yeah, yeah. To add that in. But intent, like somebody just wrote on Facebook today, which was really interesting, talking about how like intent of like making meals for your dogs, yeah. like really complex I things, that, and like, I? well, I'm not sure. I talked about that. Last no, no, no. Year somebody Casey. somebody just posted today oh, on something. Oh. Yeah, and they were just talking about how they hadn't really connected. Like all these little behaviors and choices are are born out of intent and typically that intent is leaning on our dogs too much right. needing our dogs too much being Casey. too emotionally connected it was what we're talking about with Casey sorry yeah 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 like yeah, yeah ice yeah. cream cone and I was saying like that intent and and is... and she responded talking about like owners like she hadn't connected yeah, that owners yeah, okay, making cool. food for their dogs and things like yeah, that could intent. could be connected to that yeah. because it seems so benign totally. but it's not benign in that like with human beings you can always recognize subtext right yeah. if I do something Thing for you and you feel it's like there's something else underneath or or, or, or I'm doing or, it for a reason right. you're, you're gonna recognize it we're yeah. so well trained but we don't see it with dogs yeah. but uh, or we don't think dogs see it with us yeah. I, I actually would be the, the clear way to say it but they do mm -hmm. that's the whole thing and when you're in a soft mode with the dog affection and things like that and you're you want to go out and tell your dog listen to me and don't misbehave it's such a mixed message for yeah. a dog yeah. you can share affection and all that stuff and cuddle bug time and all that once you get your dog into a great space and sure. your dog is like rock solid yeah. cool go do it then but don't try and like build like hey believe me I'm, me I'm I'm yeah. I'm I'm leading the show yeah. when you're sending out you're sending out mixed messages of softness yeah. consistently. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, cool. it, just like your mom, she wouldn't she wouldn't start uh, the semester off no. by going around and hugging all the kids in the classroom. No, she would because she'd she, get eaten alive. You know, <laughs> she'd be hosed. The rest of, that minute would be great. This is a cool thing, like that concept of like, you know, you have the regret of discipline, or you have the no, I'm sorry, you have, you have the, the pain. pain of discipline or the pain of regret. So. The pain of my mom being disciplined and being like, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a hard ass with you guys now, and it's gonna suck and not be comfortable. Versus her just starting off really soft and having everyone love her, but yeah. then the rest of the nine months of the year being horrible. 
or her starting off like tough, but Boom. then having no regret later when all the kids are great. And yeah, and the kids are comfortable, respectful, totally polite, and and learning. and excelling and <laughs> yeah. all that stuff. So, anyways, cool. that one got long and and out of hand and long in the tooth for Ladon. Ladon. So uh, <laughs> we're gonna get out of here into the next question. Okay.